Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Kev's Movie Corner. I am Kev and this week we are talking about 1926's The General. Uh, this movie uh, was directed by Clyde Bruckman and Buster, Cle- uh, Buster Keaton. Sorry, it was also written by the same two and stars Buster Keaton, Marion Mack, and Glenn Cavender. Um, quick uh, snippet from IMDb. Uh, after being rejected by the Confederate military, uh, not realizing it was due to a crucial civilian role, an engineer must single-handedly recapture his beloved locomotive after it is seized by Union spies and return it through enemy lines. Um, this is a kind of comedy action adventure movie, um, black and white, uh, silent film. Um, it's, I mean, again, it's a silent film, so it's kind of like a slapstick kind of Charlie Chaplin-esque type movie, if that's what, if you, uh, think about something like that. Um, it, uh, it starts with, you know, a, uh, uh, Buster Keaton's character who is, um, Johnny Gray, um, basically the, the, uh, Union Army is, has made it to where they're at in the South in Georgia, and his family decides to enlist in the army and, and, um, try to fight them, so he gets rejected, um, because they, uh, the Union, or the Confederacy says that, uh, the, him being an engineer is more important to the South's cause than him being a soldier, but they don't tell him this, so he kind of uh, gets shunned um, by his uh, girlfriend and his uh, and others, and ends up uh, just running a train uh, for part for the war. Um, and like I said in the snippet, he does uh, it get his train gets stolen at one point by a group of uh, Union spies, and he chases them down with a train and. Um, Comedy ensues as he does so, um, with random, just like, them trying to catch each other, um, there's a little, um, him trying to catch the other people, them trying to stop him by cutting down, or knocking things onto the tracks and things like that, and, um, it's just kind of one of those comedic roles, the whole, I, not the whole movie, but probably 95% of it is train chases, um, because he goes that way, and then eventually he catches up, he ends up stealing the train back, and um, going back to help the Confederacy fight a, uh, a um, surging Union army. Um, it is, and it's kind of the same thing back and forth, it's pretty ridiculous, but it's a short watch, it's an hour and 18 minutes, so not not difficult to, um, to get through it all. Um, uh, there is, uh, some interesting, uh, things with this movie. It had a relatively, well, actually at the time it had an extremely high budget. Um, uh, there's a scene in it where, um, Buster Keaton is, um, trying to shoot a cannon, over when he's chasing the Union soldiers at the beginning, he's trying to shoot a cannon over his train to hit them, and um, he ends up not getting the cannonball to go far enough. It only goes into the cabin of the train that the train that he's driving, which is right in front of this um, cannon. And um, they uh, it says on here that um, he actually had to in order to get it to land in the cab because. Back then, you didn't have graphics, so whatever you did was was actually happening. Um, he had to use twe- uh, he had to use tweezers to count the grains of gunpowder to make it land in the right place. Um, there, uh, there's also, I mean, he ends up breaking it and almost blowing himself up too at one point, and and a bunch of different things like that. Um, the movie had a seven hundred and fifty uh thousand uh dollar budget um uh and it didn't do well at the box office um it it barely made its money 
um, back. Um, so, um, Buster Keaton, he, this was a movie that he was able to produce himself. Um, he was apparently put under a restrictive deal, uh, with the, with the film company, uh, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, which is still around, uh, well, kind of is still around, it's still, the name is still used, MGM, um, and uh, they put him under a deal because he was he just basically blew through this money. One of the big things that um, cost a big chunk of money, of course, not you know all of it, but um, I think a lot of people, if you've seen it on TikTok or YouTube or something, have seen the train crash um, off of a bridge. Um, that was you know an actual practical effect. Um, that was at the time the most expensive single shot in history, um, at $42,000, um, Buster Keaton used six different cameras to, uh, shoot the scene, and they started four hours late because of trials to make sure that it would work properly, um, and, uh, the, uh, the train ends up crashing off the bridge, um, and it was a tourist attraction for people, uh, for about 20 years, um, in the forties, they, uh, salvaged it for scrap, uh, during World War II. Um, but that, um, scene, there was, um, about, th there was thousands, several thousand local residents. They shut down, they declared a holiday. They shut down the town. All the local residents came out to watch, um, and, uh, including the extras from the Oregon National Guard who were part of the, um, who were part of the extras to do the fight, um, battle scenes and things. So, um, uh, when he finished, also, this is an interesting one. He had shot 200,000 feet of film. Um, so that's a, that's a lot. That's, that seems like a lot. I don't know what a normal movie would have had back in the day, but, 200,000 feet of film seems, seems like a lot. Um, so yeah, it was, um, the movie was kind of a flop. It's, um, it's obviously on this list now. It is number 18 on our, um, AFI list. Um, and I don't think it was on the original one. No, it wasn't. So, um, it wasn't on the original one. Uh, this is the 10 year anniversary edition. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's again, like a slapstick comedy. It's not, um, it's going to be interesting to watch. Um, if you can get behind a silent film, it's, there's not very many scenes. Like you don't have very many of the talking slates that you would see on some of them. Um, it's just kind of music in the background. Now, it's supposed to be a, um, it is a silent film, and it is a black and white film. The one that I ended up finding was on Amazon, and it, because it was free, and, um, it had been colorized, um, and... Uh, and sound added to it at some point, because they had sound effects like people, um, you could hear people kind of thumping around, when like thumping sounds when they were walking, or when a bunch of people were walking around, and, and you could hear the train, they had train sounds in it, um, like the chugging of a, tra of a, of a steam train in it, and it just, it had some, it was kind of odd, you could tell they didn't exactly match up, because it was just like, they just cut in some sound. So I don't know when that happened. Um, it, I would say that it probably happened a long time ago because it didn't seem like it matched up that well with a lot of things. And a lot of it just sounded like people clunking things together, like clunking pieces of wood together to make the sound of people walking and stuff like that. So, um, it, uh, and it was it was a little a little different. I had to go back and I went back and found a different version where I could see if that's actually how it was or if it was 
different. I knew it had been colored, colored at some point, but the sound wasn't there originally either. And the music was different too, so that was that was interesting. I did see that in um, uh, looking at the um, information on this film that so first of all it was it was selected to be in the Library of Congress in 1989 um, as a historic film, but I think it said that there was a in the 2000s it was done with another it was another version of it was done with a with an orchestra but i can't seem to find that right now um but yeah it um i would i would say it's worth a watch it's something funny if you just want something to you do have to watch it because it's a silent film so there's not talking for you to kind of listen for going on it's just music going on in the background um but but it's short. I mean, I've watched YouTube videos that are longer than this, so it's relatively easy to uh it's relatively easy to get through. Um but yeah, guys, I think um that is all I have for you this week. Um next week, we're going to be watching On the Waterfront from 1954. Um and I uh, hope you guys will watch that with me. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and uh, I will talk to you guys next week.